So what I'm going to do now is actually create a series of numbers to generate the numbers 1 through 12, which will specify every month of the year. So I'll use the series component. For the starting number, I'm going to plug in 1, which is the first month. So I'll just use a panel for the input. For the step size, I again have 1 because I want to increase by 1 every step. And then for the count, I need 12 months. So I'll copy and paste the panel, enter 12, but then to the count. And what you should get out of this is uh, 12 integers, 1 through 12, representing each day of the month. All right, so now I'm going to plug that into my month. You can see again that it's done sort of what we want, but again, it seems like we have kind of a data management issue because instead of creating 10 suns over 12 months, it's created a much smaller amount of suns. And again, this is when you see something like this, it usually means that you have to either graft or flatten the parts of the tree to bring it up and down or down in dimensions. Uh, we can look at our data coming out. So out of this vector, we expect to get 11 times 12 pieces of data and it's only generating 12. So that means we actually have to graft um, one of these inputs. So I'll try grafting this one. Okay, so that's now what we want. So we have 12 uh, days from the year coming in, so the 15th of every month. And then we have 11 days coming in on a higher dimension. So now those are being interlaced and it's giving us 132 positions of the sun, which is what we want. Okay, so we're almost there. We have all of the angles we need. Uh, we just have to make a few small revisions to make this work the way we want. And the main thing we wanna do is we wanna flatten all of the vectors coming out into one plane because here it generated that two dimensional structure so that all the angles of each day are separate but when we calculate the angles we just want all of those angles being in one dimension okay so we'll flatten that and now this will give us what we want so again we have is all the panels coming in on a higher dimension and we have all the angles coming in on the lower dimension and once you do that it should work exactly the same way as before except now instead of just looking at one day of the year, we're actually looking at every day of the year. And since this is still um, a dynamic model, we can actually start to change the parameters that generate geometry and start to actually see how, how the method in which we're generating geometry has a direct effect on the insulation uh, that's falling onto the surface. All right, so that was a really s pretty basic example of how to use the heliotrope plugin to generate the geometry of the sun with the idea that um, we can use that geometry to create our own analysis tools. So in this example, I, I recreated um, a pretty common analysis tool, which is calculate insulation. But you can imagine how you can use a similar process to generate your own custom tools for doing the kind of analysis that's important to you. You see also what's cool about this is if I hide the, the panels, you see all the solar angles here. You know? So you can always take any piece of data from Grasshopper and visualize it in the Grasshopper view. You can also imagine doing something like um, for each, instead of for each panel adding up all the insulation, for each vector adding up the total insulation and visualizing that on the series of vectors. So you can see like what part of the year the most energy is falling onto. I haven't really gone too much into detail on trees um, we've sort of been figuring out as we went along. Just to show you how um, your data structure uh, could be useful um, and how important it is to understand what you're visualizing or what you're trying to analyze and what the right data structure is for that. So remember I ended up saying that maybe you can visualize all the sun vectors and color them according to when you're getting the most insulation on the building. And that's really easy to do. All you would need to do flip the way your data is working for that to work. So in this case, we were getting, um, our data structure was giving us values uh, for every panel. And it was giving us a, um, 
a collection of angle values for each panel. So here you can see the data structure is 350 panels. Each of the 350 panels is on its own branch. And within that branch, there's 132 angles. So when we sum everything together, we get the total installation for every panel. So say we want to flip this, and instead of calculating the total numbers for each panel, we want to calculate the total numbers for each sun vector. So what we have to do is actually flip this data set. So the branches um, are uh, organized according to angles and not, by, uh, not according to panels, okay? And the way we can do that really quickly in Grasshopper is this component called flip matrix. So if we feed in this data into flip matrix, we can see what this does. Let's use a parameter viewer. So this, there's another um, node which is useful for analyzing the structure of a data set. So if we have our original angles, you can see it tells us we have 350 branches. And those 350 branches correspond to our panels. And in each branch, there's 132 values. And if we feed that into the flip matrix, it basically flips that relationship between branch and the things inside the branches. So we plug this in here, we, say, we see we have 132 branches and there are 350 values in each branch. Okay, so once we have that flipped, you can see that we have the total installation over all the panels for each uh, sun angle that we're working with. And now we can plug that into our data structure. So it's the same as before. All we've done is change the way that the data is structured. But now what we're doing is calculating the data for each angle. And then to visualize it, we just need to replace uh, a few things. Instead of feeding in the panels into our geometry on our custom preview, we're going to feed in our, the lines that we generated for the sun angles. We'll just replace that here. Hide that. Show that. And then we also need to uh, flatten those lines because right now we're getting a color for each of the 132 vectors but they're being organized into this complex data structure. So to make it line up with these colors, we just need to flatten it. Okay, so now we have our 132 lines and 132 uh, colors. And now what this is telling us is the angles of the sun, which are generating the most insulation onto our building. So you can see that the higher the sun is, the more insulation our building is generated, which makes sense. But actually, depending on the curvature in your building and even the angle of the panels, all of that you know, will change slightly.